Welcome back to the graveyard, everybody. This is MTG Ghoul Dude. And today we're going to be continuing the Digging Up the Past series. And we're going to be continuing off with Dark Ascension. Now, a little bit about Dark Ascension. It was the second set in our favorite Innerstrad block. The 57th Magic Expansion was released on February 3rd, 2012. Also, this was a top down design set with a horror theme set puts a stronger emphasis on the tribal creature types such as providing a lord for each of the main types like vampires ghosts werewolves zombies and humans so without further ado let's get into it now you may be wondering why is a human in the zombie roll up well Lil Cathar is a two drop for two white it's a two two with vigilance human soldier and when it dies return it to the battlefield transformed under your control at the beginning of the next end step well, it transforms into a zombie soldier that can't block. So, this is Unhollowed Cathar. Like I said, it is a zombie soldier and it cannot block, but it is a 2 1, so it actually gets a downshift in its toughness. But we still love him all the same. Draw off some Mind Crusher for 4 and 2 blue. It's a zombie whore, 5-5. Five, five. Whenever it enters the battlefield, target player puts the top five cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. And it also has the undying ability, which is if it dies, it comes back with no, with a plus one, plus one counter on it. And if it doesn't, if it do, did have a plus one, plus one counter on it when it died, it just stays in the graveyard. It's pretty cool if you want to do like a self-mill theme in a zombie deck. Headless Scob for two and a blue it's a three six zombie warrior an additional cost to cast it you may exile a creature card from your graveyard and it enters the battlefield tapped relentless scobs for three and two blue it's a four four zombie as an additional cost to cast relentless scobs exile a creature card from your graveyard this also has undying so i mean if you can reanimate it you don't have to pay the cost but if you when it comes back again with a plus one plus one counter, it's a five five for five. So I mean, it's really not that bad when it comes to just you know getting what you're paying for. Screeching Scob for one and a blue. It's a two one zombie, and when it enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. So if you're playing that, like I said, that playing that heavy mill self mill theme, this is actually a pretty good card to help you get that rolling a little bit. And then we got just the most adorable little thing. Black cat for one and a black. It's a 1-1 one, one zombie cat, but it doesn't do nice things. When it dies, target opponent discards a card at random. So you could get a land, or you could get the thing they tutored for on turn two. Farbog, Farbog Boneflinger for four and a black. It's a 2-2. Two, two. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets minus two, minus two until under turn. Oh, and I love the flavor text on the bottom here, and it's a it's commentary between Gisa and Giraffe, and she says, "Here, some bones for you to choke on, dear brother." That feud has very been very long standing and just just been gruesome all in all. Giraffe's messenger for three black pips. It's a zombie and it enters the battlefield tapped, but it is a three two with undying. So when it dies, it comes back again. But that's not the that's not the cherry on top of this cake. It's actually, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life. This is actually one of the cards in my Zombardment deck, and it's actually heavily played in the zomb most Zombardment lists if they're running a more heavy zombie theme. Another, along with it is the All-Star Combo King Gravecrawler. For one in black, you get a 2-1 that can't block, but you may cast it from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. It doesn't have to be a token it doesn't have to be a non-token as long as it has zombie plastered somewhere on it it can come back and it just shows how relentless this creature type is highborn ghoul for two black it's a two one and it has intimidate so that is a really good type of effect whenever it comes to just being able to get in for damage then we get into another zombie all-star, Machaeus the Unhollowed, with a very high price also. For three and three black, it's a zombie cleric, legendary creature, so this could be your next zombie commander. With Intimidate, 
Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. Another any other non-human creatures you control get plus one plus one and have undying. So not only do they get a normal, just a normal buff, a normal anthem from him, he also gives out undying. So not only would they be Gravecaller would be what a three two, and then when it comes back again, it has undying. So it would be a four three. Now that doesn't sound like a bad deal for one mana. Sightless Ghoul for three and a black. It's a 2-2 two, two zombie soldier. And it can't block, but it does have Undying. So you can just send it into the red zone and it doesn't matter if it gets through or not. Ghoul Tree for seven and a green. It's a zombie tree folk for all those zombie tree nerds. Ghoul Tree costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. So yeah, maybe the plain text may be seven and a green. But it could be just a green for a 10-10. Which is, in some cases, is really good. Then we get into a great zombie lord, Diagraph Captain. For one and a blue and a black, it's a 2-2 zombie soldier. It has death touch, but it doesn't end there. It gives all other zombies you control plus one, plus one. And then when another zombie you control dies, target opponent loses a life. This is just a... This is the priest cursor to the many effects we've seen... Here recently when it, you know, when a zombie dies, you know, and it's just, I'm glad they keep pulling this support for when a zombie dies, when a zombie enters. It just, the more the better, if you ask me. Having Gold Lick. For three, a blue and a black, it's a zombie wizard. That's a 4-4. Four, four. And it, for one mana, you may cast target creature card from a graveyard this turn. When you cast that card this turn, it gains all abil activated abilities of that card into end of turn. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a zombie. It could be a giraffe visionary stitcher that gives all of your creatures flying. That you can use to tap and sack to make another. It just goes. The effects are just amazing. So it just. You can't not do well with this card it might be expensive come mana cost but it has really good it's really good utility having gold rune binder this is where we get into our supplementary zombie support cards it is a uh, human wizard for two and two blue it's in a two two but it has the effect where if you tap two and a blue and tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield, then put a counter on each zombie creature you control. So you could slowly start assimilating, you know, your your non-zombies or your zombies you know aren't coming back from the graveyard or you won't want coming back from the graveyard and start using them to just make all of the rest of your zombies bigger. This is a card that I've wanted to use, and I've seen some use here and there for me, but it just doesn't it doesn't get it for me all the time. I'll implore you to, if you do run this card, let me know, because I want to see if anybody else has had luck using the Rune Binder. Reap the Seagraph for two and a black. You can put a, it's a sorcery speed spell. You can put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And for flashback, for four and a blue, you can do it again. Now, this may just be me, but Mon of the Unhollow that we've got not too long ago in Shadows of Anastrod is just a little bit better than this because it's four mana, but you can flash it back again, but you get two zombies on the first run where you're getting only one for three here. To me, that's a little bit better. Wake Dancer for two and a black. It's a 2-2 two, two human shaman. And it has the ability Morbid. So when a creature dies, it makes a zombie token. Which is, you know, sometimes it's pretty good if you can blink her. Or if she dies and you bring her back. Technically, she entered and a creature did die this turn. So, I wonder if there's a way to just like infinitely loop this creature. Just to keep bringing it back. Oh, there could be. I mean, you could, it would be just like infinite death triggers. But what you would do is you would take this, 
Ashnod's Altar, Nim Deathmantle, Sack. You know, you would have to have another creature, but Sack, the Wake Dancer, and another creature to the Ashnod's Altar. Pay the mana for the Nim Deathmantle. It comes back, brings a zombie, and it just keeps cycling through. And if you have a way to, like, you know, I don't know, make more zombies when a creature dies or make an extra creature when this dies, you could actually go infinite and make an infinite amount of 2 2 black zombie creature tokens. I might want to write that down. That's actually pretty good. Pretty unsuspecting, too. Zombie Apocalypse. For three and three black, you get a sorcery. Return all zombie cards from your graveyards to the battlefield. And to just to top it all off, destroy all the humans. There will come a day so dark you will pray for death. On that day, your prayers will be answered. Hmm. That's a dark, if I can say so myself. But anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. I appreciate y'all stopping by and joining me in this journey. And I will see you guys next time in the graveyard.